Ooh, what's this? A box. I love boxes. You love boxes? You want to know what's in this box? You do, don't you? Hello mountain bikers, welcome to Vital MTB's gear show. We've got a bunch of new stuff to review today, including a multi-tool that stores away in the cockpit, a wide range cassette, new knee protection, and a new dropper post. But before we get into any of that, we'll take you through some of the latest product news from around the industry. Don't go anywhere. When Santa Cruz jumped into the e-bike game last year, they chose to resurrect the name of an old classic in the lineup, the Heckler. They're now adding another new model to the e-bike range, and to name it, they've reached into their bag of classics once again. The all-new Bullet is a 170mm travel bruiser built around a mixed wheel size configuration that Santa Cruz calls MX or Motocross, more commonly referred to as a mullet bike. Our tester was blown away by how stable and planted this new ride is, and with Shimano's new EP8 motor, it is also more powerful and more efficient. Check out the full review right here on the channel for more. Looking for a good value wheel set that offers plenty of lateral stiffness while serving up a compliant ride? The new Effect from Raceface checks in with a 30mm wide rim, offset spokes and reasonable weight. At 599 US dollars, our tester was impressed with the performance and after a month mounted up on a hardtail, they were still spinning true. Check out the full review for more. Are you the kind of person who regularly strips their bolts? Upgrade your game with a digital torque wrench from Pro, a Shimano company. This ratchet style wrench comes with nine tool bits and it delivers both visual and audible feedback to let you know you've torqued things to spec. It's part of a whole new range of tools recently released by Pro. Head to our site to learn more. Do you love the transfer dropper post but you wish it was longer? The genie in the Fox bottle has granted your wish as they've just released a 200mm version. Hopefully it still delivers the same smooth action and excellent reliability as we've come to expect from the transfer. Reverse Components has been hard at work looking for solutions to small but nonetheless vexing problems and the answer comes in the form of their Bike Hacks range. Want to know exactly how much sag you're running your coil shock at? Problem solved. Want to run single speed on your XD driver hub? Problem solved. Want a quick and easy way to slacken out your head angle without having to run an angle set? Problem solved. A couple of weeks ago Specialized dropped a new shoe, the 2FO Roost. Aside from a bunch of nice features present in the shoe itself, the flat pedal version also marks the first time that another company has delivered a true match to the grip of 510's Stealth Rubber. Specialized went around the world looking for a supplier who could cook up the recipe they knew they wanted, and they found it. The 2FO Roost Flats impressed us from the very first ride with absolutely flawless grip on a variety of pedals. The rubber feels a little bit harder than Stealth Rubber, but it clings to the pins just as tenaciously. We'll keep testing to bring you the final verdict on longevity as well, but in the meantime, we can't recommend this new shoe enough. Check out the full review right here on the channel for more. 1UP has a habit of coming up with clever solutions to common problems, and we've been big fans of their EDC tool system ever since it was first introduced. Now, the first version required you to tap out a thread in your fork's steerer to fit a special compression top cap, which was followed by a second version that dispensed with the need to modify your fork, but introduced a compression stem instead. Both versions work well, and they allow you to store a full-sized version of the tool in the entire length of the steerer. To create a solution that works with a regular star nut and does not require any major modifications to your cockpit, 1UP has just launched the EDC Lite. This clever little container takes the place of your stem cap, which allows you to retain the star nut compression system. To install the EDC Lite carrier, you start with knocking down your star nut to the required depth. The kit comes with a specific bolt that is sized to do just that. Then simply slide the carrier into the steerer and tighten the bolt at the bottom to compress your headset just like you would with a regular stem cap. Slide the tool in and you're good to go. If you have multiple bikes you can get extra carriers for $15 a piece which allows you to just move the tool to the bike you're riding that day. The tool itself is the exact same multi-tool found in the full-sized version of the EDC system so if you already have that on a bike you can once again get away with buying just the EDC light carrier. We've been running ours for a couple of weeks by now and we love it. The tool is easy to slide in and out, but it remains securely in place even on very rough trails. Simple to install, easy to use, and so practical that you might soon be wondering how you got by without one. A few years back, we rounded up a bunch of knee pads in different categories to help our readers and viewers figure out what's what. IXS had a couple of contenders in the mix back then that we got on well with, so when the company recently released two updated versions, we were eager to give them a try. The Trigger and Carve have been in the IXS catalogue for some time already, but now they are joined by a race version of each model, featuring added external plastic hard shell caps for extra protection. 
Both protectors fall into the Aggressive Enduro or DH categories, with enough protection for pretty much all types of riding, yet with enough comfort for all-day wearability. They are built around an X-Matter pad, which is IXS's take on a viscoelastic material that hardens up under impact to help redistribute impact forces. Both feature a wraparound softshell with extra padding on the side and top of the knee, and two straps to help secure the protector on the leg. The inside is very soft to the touch, and the straps offer a good range of adjustment. The Carve is about 30 grams lighter than the Trigger, courtesy of a slightly smaller X-Matter pad and a smaller hardshell cap. Similar to the previous IXS protectors we've tested, both these new models feature a snug fit with a high degree of comfort provided by the soft materials. They are both very supportive of the whole knee joint without being overly restrictive. The generous silicon strip in the top hem, coupled with the two Velcro straps, make sure that the protectors stay in place no matter what, but they remain comfortable enough to pedal around in for hours on end too. If you like the idea of hard shell protection that doesn't look or feel like Stormtrooper armor, you should give these a serious look. With colder days now upon us here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's crucial to stay on top of your layering game. Specialized's new Trail Series wind jacket is so small and light that it packs down inside its own single pocket, yet it manages to provide efficient protection against wind and light rain showers. There's a hood meant to be worn under the helmet if things really take a turn for the nastier. The super light fabric is breathable to make sure you don't steam up in your own heat during intense efforts. The cut is relaxed enough to fit over other layers, but it's tight enough to not be in the way while riding. The minimalistic branding also means you can wear it anywhere. We're fans of this one. We've had good results with several dropper posts from PNW components, and with their all new Loam dropper, they're looking to improve things further. The Loam takes the place of the Bachelor as PNW's premium dropper. There's nothing premium about the price tag, however, as the Loam checks in at just $199, a $40 price reduction compared to the Bachelor. You still get PNW's own adjustable air cartridge, backed by a three-year warranty, but the Loam Dropper now also offers adjustable max travel via a simple travel reduction system, similar to the one found on the Rainier Dropper as well. And for the first time that we're aware of, you can now customize your dropper to match your bike with the help of a colored replacement rubber band around the post collar. This is obviously a bit of a gimmick, but at the same time, dropper posts do tend to look pretty boring, and a pop of color is sure to please many a fan of color-coordinated builds. In terms of dimensions, the Loam really has all the bases covered. It's available in 30.9, 31.6 and 34.9 mm diameter in four different length options ranging from 125 to 200 mm. Each can be adjusted down by up to 30 mm in 5 mm increments. PNW has also reduced the overall length of the post to make sure more riders can fit a longer post. On the trail, the Loam has delivered good performance through a handful of rides. The action is smooth and consistent, and the ergonomics of the Loam Lever makes it the perfect match for the new post. They are sold separately. E13 jumped into the cassette game a few years ago, looking to disrupt the market with a unique take on how to eke out more range from a one by drivetrain. We've had good results with their two-piece cassettes to date, although we did note that shifting could sometimes be a little bit clunkier than with original SRAM or Shimano cassettes. The Helix R is a full redesign that looks to improve shifting performance with both SRAM and Shimano derailleurs, and it has managed to drop a serious chunk of weight in the process as well. At 345 grams for the 12-speed version, it's lighter than both SRAM XX1 and Shimano XTR cassettes, and at 289 US dollars, it's also cheaper by quite a bit. It delivers more range than either of its main competitors, thanks to the 9-tooth small cog. That 9-tooth cog does mean that it will only work with an XT driver, as there would not be enough room for E13 to try to make one that would fit a microspline hub. The two-piece design means you can replace individual parts as they wear out, instead of the whole cassette, and the two largest cogs are also available in a few different colors. Always a bonus. Installing the Helix is simple. Start off by securing the two bigger cogs to the driver via a bolt, then lock the rest of the cluster in place with the help of a chain whip. To finish, secure the two parts together with a small locking bolt, and you're done. Removing the cassette is now easier than before as well. The top cluster has been machined to fit a classic cassette lock ring tool, which does away with the need for using two chain whips for removal, as was the case with the previous versions. We tested the Helix R with both Shimano and SRAM drivetrains with equally good results. No major adjustments were needed when replacing the original cassettes, and shifting performance on the trail was very close to the original as well. Just a tiny bit rougher during some shifts, but the difference is barely noticeable. Chain retention was excellent with both drivetrains. For our money, E13 has now finally delivered on the promise of its original cassette designs. More range, lower weight, and a lower price than its main competition. 
We'll continue to keep an eye on durability over time, but so far, all signs point to a really good product and an excellent alternative to the established players. Well, okay then, what's in the box? It is a sample of the all-new Rogue Core MIPS extended coverage half-shell helmet from Bluegrass, intended for aggressive trail and enduro use. The Rogue features 16 vents and a very open internal design to promote good breathability and a number of adjustments to ensure a good fit. The straps can be adjusted around your ears and the internal harness moves up and down if needed. There's even a cutout around the back for your ponytail. In terms of safety features, there's a MIPS layer to help reduce the transmission of rotational forces to your brain in case of an off-axis impact to your head. The visor is flexible to allow it to move out of the way and reduce the risk of snagging and twisting during a crash. There's also extra coverage along the temples and the back of the head to provide as much impact protection as possible with a half-shell helmet. The Rogue is very comfortable and it's easy to dial in a good fit. On the trail, the helmet breathes well and remains stable in action. We've only just received this one, so we'll bring you a complete review at some point further down the line, but for now, we like what we see here. If you do too, you can definitely put this one on your shortlist. All right then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.